Hey there folks, welcome back. With the release of DCS 2.9 patch, we got quite the update. DLSS, DLAA anti-aliasing, updated AI 3D models, and improved replay tracks. And of course, new bugs that will be ironed out, uh, hopefully very soon. But what I wanted to focus on today was the improved VoIP system that ED has been working on for some time now. As most of you who play multiplayer know, SRS is king when it comes to VoIP with Discord always being a great backup to that. SRS is an external program created by SiriBob, who has done an extremely wonderful job that has filled in a very necessary void of being able to communicate in DCS through a simulated replica of radios controlled through your in-game cockpit radio panels. However, ED always wanted an in-house VoIP solution that they would hope would slowly phase out SRS over time once they ironed everything out. And with 2.9 out, they added a whole lot of new features and capabilities to their new VoIP system. So today, let's take a look at how VoIP is currently doing in DCS just to see where it's at in its current implementation. And in order to help me with this task, I am joined here by Tuvas. Say hi, Tuvas. Hello. Now, I won't be going over the setup process because Daddy Waggy made a great video explaining the overall features and how to activate everything. So I'm gonna have a link in that video in the description. Instead, let's focus on how the radios sound. Oh, it sounds so cool, dude. How they seem to currently work. Yeah, I have, I have no idea. I don't know what's happening anymore. <laughs> and uh, maybe some uh, hidden features of how the VoIP system works in DCS. Now, while I'm not going to go through the entire whole setup process, I will mention a few things in order to help you guys since we ran into uh, a few issues uh, for everything to actually work right. Now, in the audio section, make sure that you have both of these options turned on. And here, instead of leaving things in the auto or default section, actually set your correct audio devices. Uh, we noticed that it can have an effect on whether or not things will work correctly. Now, I am using a Go XLR, so my options are going to look a little bit different from yours. When in a server, you can bring up the VoIP box by pressing the left control, left shift, and tab. And this is a purely optional box that does not need to be on for things to work, but there are a few things that need to be checked and understood for things to work correctly. The first issue that we ran into is the master volume, which was set to zero. So please make sure that you put it to at least 50%. Also, whenever you restart DCS, double make sure that you check this again because it didn't always save correctly. What's your master volume set to? And then the cog wheel for that? Master volume's at zero, why? Ah, there you go, that would explain it. Why? <laughs> anyway, okay. I recommend 50%. <laughs> if you, by chance, press Control shift tab and bring up the VoIP box and nothing shows up, it's probably because the server itself has disabled VoIP. You didn't do anything wrong, that's a server side setting. Next up, there will be some confusion as to this whole VoIP option menu. So let's go over that. You can think of this section that we are in here as like a Discord version of VoIP that's called the room mode. You can join per coalition or make your own channels, add people into your own private channels, that sort of thing. Now, this has nothing to do with the plain radios at all. So treat this section of VoIP like a Discord. Meanwhile, if you press this icon here, it will switch green, and now your VoIP system is just purely to do with the in-game radios of your aircraft called Radio Mode, and has no longer anything to do with the previous Discord-like channel of Room Mode that we just saw. Now, be aware that to talk in the Room Mode, it is a completely different key binding than Radio Mode VoIP button, and they cannot be the same button. It's the one that looks like a wireless signal, like an antenna yeah. broadcast. So that should, that should just take you to the common channels. Yeah, so now you're in the common channel for Coalition Blue. It's a completely separate binding that you have to set up. Oh. And it cannot be the same one you've bound to VoIP in your specific aircraft. It has to be a separate one. Uh, Tutor 1-1 one, one broadcasting on common channel. Can you hear me? Is, does that make a difference if you're in common? It's only if your name is bolded, then you're actually in common. Otherwise, it's, it's effectively a player list. By the way, if you don't care about room mode and you just want to get straight to the radios right on start, click this button right here. Alright, so first up, we went and tested the A10 radios. Remember that the radio frequencies must be changed from the aircraft radio panel itself and not through this VoIP box option. 
Additionally, the icons will light up, letting you know which radio you are broadcasting on with the radio status box here. The RPTT up here will change colors to indicate the different status. If it's gray, then the radios are off or damaged. If it's yellow, then at least one single radio is online and ready to transmit and receive. If it's red, then the radio is transmitting. And if it's green, then it is receiving. Great. Okay. Tutor one checking in three zero one two three. Can you hear me? I hear you loud and clear now. Okay. So it seems to be intermittent. Nice. And I do hear the engines in the background. That's pretty neat. Yeah, it's cool, right? Now check this out. Wait, watch me uh, open the canopy. All right. So now the engine should be even more pronounced. Keep talking. So, with the canopy open, you should now see, hear a little more of the engines. Oh, in fact, one second. A little bit. It's, it's, it's there. I can definitely hear it. Yeah, we'll try this. Check this out. And full throttle. Now you should definitely hear the engines in the background. Unfortunately, no. Oh, really? Did, do you hear anything in the background, or does it still sound like an idle engine? Pretty much idle engine. Ah. <laughs> Well, do it progressively. Go uh, broadcast, hold it down, go back to idle, and then go full forward. Okay, broadcasting, going to idle, drop to idle, now going to go full throttle, and going full throttle, still holding down push to talk, and that is full throttle now. I uh, can't really tell. There was some sort of change, but when we went full throttle, it actually just got quieter in the background. I wonder if it's one of those things where it's just peaking so much, it doesn't pick up the change in frequency, so you won't really hear a difference. So, yeah. Unfortunately, it looks like this feature isn't quite working right, but what Tuos was trying to show me is that if you were to open your canopy, you should be able to hear the background noise of the engines much higher as the person is speaking and you should be able to hear it revving up and down as you throttle up and down. However, uh, it seemed to be no worky-worky right now, so, uh, oh well. Next up, I wanted to see how the radios react to cutting out once the line of sight is severed by obstructions, like flying low over mountains into a valley. All right, Tudor One is broadcasting on 3-0, currently spectating Hold a up. Senor Hold Ralphie up. dude currently diving on the other side of a hill. Altitude, altitude. Attempting to not die from a MiG-31, he's in a left Pull up, pull up. Now he is climbing back up into the sky with his neck okay. turned almost inverted and turning from right to left. Hold. Low orbit, now he's back in level. Alright, so uh, there was no transition, it just cut off, and I couldn't hear you anymore. Slow, like, fade out or anything, it just disappeared. Uh, can you try the middle one, the ARC-210 one? 6-4? Sure, 164. Yes, to everyone or do you want to do an encryption? Uh, let's go ahead and do encryption too as well. And leave it at 305 megahertz. Tutor 1-1 broadcasting 305, ARC-164. All right, that sounds a lot more uh, degraded, if you can hear that. But that sounds cool. Yeah, I can definitely hear the different sound effect for it. That's very interesting. Okay, so let me try doing the uh, the thing with the hill here, and uh, we'll test this out real quick. Okay, uh, go ahead and start transmitting. I'm going to start diving down. Okay, Tudor 1-1 one one is now transmitting on 305. Pull up, pull up. Megahertz AM, currently watching Ralph do dive down below the hill on the other side, flying over some trees. Pull up, pull up. Lights on, he's on a very slight bank to the left. Pull up, and pull up. And who knows, maybe a MiG-31 is going <laughs> to Climbing back up, he's coming back up, he should... All right. Now, and now he should... Got it. All right, so there is, uh, it, it's not a c complete cutoff with this one. It seems like uh, it, it's a little bit more degraded. It still cuts off, but it, it, like you can hear that oh, radio transmission is degrading and then cutting off. Yeah, so I think maybe there's just some no, nothing for ARC 186, or it's just not set up correctly. Unsure. Like maybe it's the type of radio, so it's really meant as like an on-off. So as you disappear, it just straight turns off. And as you can see, there isn't a progressive cutoff for the radios. It does seem to just cut out. Unsure if that's how it's meant to sound like, but you know, now you know. Also, in this clip, we mentioned the encryption channels that you can enable and select the channels through encryption here. I know SRS has a similar feature, and if 
functions fairly similarly. The best way to explain encryption here is that it's like a VoIP within a VoIP. Let's say that you want to tune to the AWACS channel, right? And you want to listen to the AWACS, but you also want to talk to your friend on the same frequency. So you should be able to encrypt that channel and be able to transmit. So only those who are in the same frequency and yeah, encryption channel can hear each other talk or something like that. I'm actually still not quite sure if you would hear the AWACS in the background or not at the same time. That part's a little confusing. <laughs> uh, maybe you guys can figure it out. Let me know. Next up, we tried the Apache across multiple Apaches and then the intercom system, where we're also trying out the hot mic option. Radar. Two to one one, broadcasting one two four. Got you one two four. Roger that. Got you one two four as well. Searching. All right, testing intercom one two three. Intercom works. Nice, finally. Thank God. You want to test out hot mic? Okay, I was talking the whole time, but I'm pretty. Uh, you said I was talking the whole time and then it cut off. Okay, yeah. So, hot mic does not work either. <laughs> I still can't hear you. <laughs> can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so I think what the issue is is that you can think of the Vox, hot mic, and ICS PTT as three individual, like, sub channels. So, if you're on hot mic, I also have to be on hot mic and I have to push to talk on top of that. Also, um, so when you're saying you have it set to hot mic in the in the settings and like in the menu are you talking about when you go back to the lobby yes so as far as i'm aware that only affects the lobby so you're hot micing in the lobby whenever you go into it but it will not transfer to the aircraft understood i'll put it back to mic okay can you still hear me yep Rotor RPM okay high. never mind i lied so apparently that's not an issue because i'm still on hot mic yeah I have, I have no idea i don't know what's happening <laughs> See, just when you think you're onto something, then you're just quickly reminded just how little you know. All right. Yeah, we don't fully understand the hot mic option yet either. Uh, because it didn't really work, then it only worked sometimes, and we're still confused as to how it's supposed to function correctly. Uh, so, I don't really know about this one. Uh, but anyway, don't use hot mic anyway, because um, to be honest, you don't want to be this guy. Ooh, also for the intercom portion, instead of the RPTT button, it's going to be the IPTT for intercom lighting up. So, no, just a little note. Now, while we're on the subject of the helicopters, I do want to touch upon one little thing. Just like with the A10C sound of the engines in the background, you have the same effect across multiple aircraft, but it's really pronounced in things like helicopters. So I got Drewski to help me out with testing this one in the KA-50. Notice how you can hear the chopper blades in the background as he transmits. Right. Bandit Bra 034 for 45 at 5,000 hot type maker. Testing, testing. One, two, one, two, three. Oh, it sounds so cool, dude. Wait, <laughs> so are you hearing like Hello. my cockpit audio? You can hear the background noise of engines for every particular uh, aircraft. It's wow. very pronounced in things like helicopters because you can hear the blades in the background. All right, next up, we went with the older birds, like the P-51D. We wanted to hear how these older style radio effects sound like. Okay, I hear you. Uh, very muffled, but damn. Yeah, you're muffled as well. I was gonna bring that up. Testing again on channel alpha. I should be even quieter now. Is that accurate? Uh, I think I hear you slightly clearer. Uh, definitely just a lot of that static in the background. But, I mean, I guess it's normal for this type of radio. Yeah, exactly. So, one thing I did different is I changed my input volume back to 50%. This one was a little hard to hear because the engine noise was drowning out the radio volume. Uh, the radio effect itself is actually really cool, uh, though the volume of the engine on top of the staticky radio effect made it a little hard to hear things. I'm sure you could get around this by lowering the in-game volume slightly to help with the overbearing engine noise. But anyway, next up we went with some Flaming Glyphs 3 airplanes. And this time, they're Frogfoot. Now, this is a little bit different from the full fidelity planes because you're very much dependent on this VoIP panel to change frequency and play around with the volume slider as you obviously cannot interact with the radio panel in the cockpit in a non-full fidelity plane. Tutor 1-1 transmitting. Slightly different radio sound, but yeah. Uh, well, here I am on 100. Yep, got you on 100. All right, so uh, from 100, I'm going to enable the 30 watt and see if that makes any difference for anything. 
And here it is with 30 watts or whatever. Nope, you still sound exactly the same. Uh, yeah, you sound exactly the same on 20 as well. I, I can broadcast on 20 for some reason, so I'm using 100. Now we went ahead and tested the Vigan, since it's a completely different radio, and we were pleasantly surprised to find some new options for binding the VoIP buttons. So you see, normally, you would select the airplane, then go to the search bar, type in VoIP, and it should take you to the new VoIP binding options per aircraft. But, as you can see here, we are greeted with two new options. Push to talk short menu long VoIP, and then push oh. to talk, what is this? These are different. Wow. So Heepler, being the awesome developers they are, decided to make it so that you can have both the AI interaction menu and VoIP to other players on the same button, depending on if you do short or long. Uh, short press will bring up the menu, and then long press actually does the VoIP. That's pretty cool. How neat is that? Yeah, see, that's why Heepler is so awesome, because they actually think about and implement those things. Oh. Damn it. I'm getting texture errors on your aircraft. Oh, is it like the standard, like, camo pattern? Well, it's weird. 90% uh, of your aircraft is rendering correctly, but like the fins and your vertical stabilizer is missing textures. The show must go on. That's a... These new? No, this has been around for at least a little bit. That's fantastic. It is a little bit quieter than the other radios. Uh, yes, you are correct. It does sound quieter. Oh, there it is. I found it just behind the stick you were just talking about. There is a knob selector. If you hover your mouse over, it says FR24 for mode selector. And to its left is a volume knob, so bring that up to 100%. Yep, there it is. Yeah, everything sounds perfect now. Oh yeah, that sounds way better. Flippin' neat. This makes me want to play DCS more. I mean, it's not quite ready for an SRS replacement. They still need to work out all these kinks. But it is darn close. So yeah, the radio effect sounds pretty cool. And the new options give you the ability to either just bind VoIP buttons or to have the option to bind it where you can bring up the in-game comms menu with a short press and then transmit through VoIP with a long press. Now, while we were at it, we also came to a realization. Many radios will have a sound to indicate when two people are trying to talk over each other at the same frequency at the same time or what we call stepping on comms. So we wanted to see if this was modeled at all anywhere within this VoIP system. If we step on each other, we don't know that we're stepping on each other until we let go and then like we hear the trailing words of what the other person was saying. Yeah, I kind of wish they uh, they had that little that they have for a lot of these uh, radios to let you know that you're stepping on each other. Yeah, exactly. But then again, that could also be a realism thing. Like maybe these particular radios didn't have that. On that note, Let's test out the F-16, because I know for a fact the F-16 has the little going out in the background for that. Well, let's test that out. Yeah, neat. Let's uh, give that shot. Uh, 305, test, test, test. One, two, three. Yep, heard you on 305, but you cut out as you... And you cut out at the very end of yourself. <laughs> Fantastic. So I'm going to keep holding this down, so feel free to try to step on me at... Testing, testing. And, yeah, looks like it's not happening. Yeah, whenever I talk, yeah, it just cuts you off, and that's it, basically. Yep, got it. Oh, well. Rip. And testing on 124, 124, just to see how that sounds like. Yep, good to go on 124. It sounds honestly exactly the same. I don't see a quality difference. Oh, I do. I definitely do. Oh, really? Can you uh, broadcast on 124, then 305 right after? Okay, testing 124, 124. Testing 305, 305. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's a little more, like, tin canny. Cool, I like it. Pretty neat. They just need to iron out the kinks. Hells yeah. Okay, I think that about does it for that. But yeah, there's... The amount of work they put into the radios is, is really quite a bit. For every single radio to have a preset for itself. <sighs> Oof. Oh, yeah, for sure. And all the little customizations you could do, you could bring radios from other aircraft into the X team that's on red team and you want it to communicate with flankers, then you can. Right. Yeah, that part confused me at first, but then I started seeing the uh, the benefits of doing something like that. Yep. Man, excellent. Thank you so much for uh, walking me through all this. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, of course. It was kind of an experience for myself as well. That was a lot to learn. <laughs> yeah, we know more. Well, yeah, it seems like there are some issues with VoIP here and uh, cutting each other off. There are no sound effects to indicate stepping on each other, 
and it just cuts the person off while you're trying to step on them and then you hear them again once you let go. On a similar note, we also experienced some issues where while talking on a private channel without anyone interrupting us, we would just randomly cut out for no reason and we have no clue as to why. It would just happen to him and it would happen to me at the same exact time, almost as if like the server itself was having a, a problem at that exact moment, something to that extent. We don't know. We're, we're not exactly sure what, what was going on there. Yep, heard you on 305, but you cut out as you And you cut out the very end of yourself. <laughs> so another big problem is that the server will sometimes won't see you on the list. So like if you were to ask your friend to check if he sees you in the common room, and either you or him aren't there. And when you aren't there, you will not be able to talk to anyone. So a simple reconnect of the server actually fixes that problem. Um, and you'll show up back in the, on the list and you're able to talk to each other again. So simple fix, but kind of annoying. Okay, so here's another source of confusion. How do I actually bind the buttons to use this VoIP? Well, if I go to escape and adjust controls, I'm under my 810C2 right now. All I would have to do is go to the search bar and hit VoIP. And now I have my three buttons for the three radios for this aircraft. If you have, let's say, the F-16, it would just be two. If you have the F-18, it would just be two. The mids is not there, yada, yada, and so forth and so on. So if I just go ahead and quickly do this. Now I've bound all three of my radios. Great. And if I open up my VoIP box and I go here. You can see that when I press the buttons that I've just bound, I am transmitting on all those three channels. Great. But there actually is a better way of doing it because otherwise I would have to go into every single module that I own and then go to adjust controls, go to let's say, I don't know, the F-15E, go to search, go to VoIP and keep binding, you know, these things uh, every single time. Pain in the butt. So there is a different place. I can go to voice chat. So now under this section, we have a lot of this nonsense. And all you have to really know is that these are the radio one, radio two, radio three, and up to radio four for full fidelity aircraft. So instead of doing it by aircraft, I can actually just do it here in the voice chat menu. So in order to do radio one, two, and three, what I just did in the A-10, I can do it globally for every aircraft right here. And these ones over here, the R2 stuff, this is for Flaming Cliffs stuff. So I would just go in here and map this for Radio 1, Radio 2, and Radio 3. All for Flaming Cliffs 3 non-full fidelity aircraft. And I think this is a little bit easier. The only problem being that I cannot use the same buttons that I've just used here for these radios. So if I try and, let's say, double this up and do the same radio, You'll notice, oh, well, that's being used by that. So if I do that, it's going to overwrite this one. And this is where things get a little bit tricky because now it's like I don't have an eight way hat to do anything about comms for my Flaming Cliffs 3 aircraft. Because, for instance, if I were to just go and say, OK, well, maybe I can just do it per aircraft in Flaming Cliffs. Let's go to the SC 25 t If I go to the search bar and hit VoIP, uh, we don't have anything there for that. So in order to bind these things for that, you would need to go to voice chat and you would need to set them up in here in order to get your radios one, two and three. And you can go all the way up to nine in these things. So, yeah, um, this kind of sucks <laughs> and it's it's not great. And I think this is where SRS really has a leg up on uh, this voice chat. Hopefully they'll rethink these buttons and maybe make it a little bit better because right now the way this is set up is kind of a pain in the butt and I really don't like it and it's making things a lot more difficult than they should be. Oh, and uh, for things like the Apache or the F-14 where you have the intercom system for the ICS, instead of binding it there, you can also do it in the voice chat menu and that would be the INT. So uh, this is the button and it will be across every single module that I have that has an intercom. So that would be that. And I guess you have two intercom systems. I don't think I needed more than one, but eh, eh, there it is. Okay, so overall conclusions. I'm honestly impressed where the current VoIP implementation is at. Each radio has their own effects, and we have some pretty sweet options available to us that offer a darn pretty close SRS experience already. However, as you've all seen, there are enough issues and problems with the current implementation that it's, uh, it's not going to be replacing SRS anytime soon in its current state.
For instance, we can't, to my knowledge, adjust the radio volume per ear like you can in SRS, which is a great feature to help distinguish between radios. Now, I don't know if this is actually realistic, but I do know that it's a feature that many love in SRS. Now, while you can see the list of people talking in room mode, you cannot see who is talking in radio mode. So this brings up the question of trolls. You can't punish someone if you don't know who's transmitting, right? But, as soon as they can iron out all these problems, we're gonna be in a position where uh, DCS VoIP will be almost neck and neck with SRS. And you also have to remember that ED is not done with this VoIP system, there are still features missing. They would like to add compatibility with third-party apps, like Lotac, for example. By the time DCS 3.0 hits, heck, maybe even before that, we might actually start seeing people use the in-game VoIP more over SRS, and a shift to slowly drift away from SRS might just start happening. Who knows? Issues aside, which are gonna get fixed soon anyway, what do you guys think? Did you like the way things sounded? What are your thoughts on where this is going? Let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, that's it for me. Have a great day, and I will see you guys on the next one. See ya. I believe so, yeah. Oh, Blue Angel, hello. What the flippin' flip are you doing, sir? Do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know if you know. <laughs> <laughs>